Greetings everyone, this is Non-Expert here back again with another video. It's been a while since I've actually posted a video and I do apologize for that. I've been like really busy and then I was having laptop issues. And before I start, I would just like to give a huge shout out to a few people. Um, I want to give my thanks to Aditi, to Patrick, to M, and my brother. And if it wasn't for them, these videos would not have been happening and they've helped me out a lot. So do so show your support by subscribing and show them your love. Anyways, so today we are going to be solving problem number 63 and the difficulty is going to be that I had is medium. Uh, this problem was asked by Microsoft and let's just get down to it. So you have been given a 2D matrix of characters and a target word and we need to write a function that returns whether the word can be found in the matrix by going left to right or up to down. Um, Pretty straightforward, you've been given an example over here. So what you're saying is, is that you have a 2D matrix which has elements which are basically characters and you've been given a target word and you want to see whether that target word can be formed through, uh, through like the 2D matrix. So you can think of this like a crossword sort of a thing, um, but this is a pretty standard question. So you've been given an example here of foam, which is the target word, and you can see that foam does get formed in this 2D matrix if you take F, um, over here, over here, and just basically go down. So that basically forms foam. And the other example which has been given is mask. So you can see the same thing if you start over here and you go all the way to the right, you can form that thing as well. Cool, pretty straightforward. Um, and fortunately, we were able to find a similar problem on lead code and the name of the problem is word search. Now, the only difference between this problem and the daily coding problem problem is that you are allowed to go um, from left to right, from right to left, from top to down, to top, down to top, right? Um, whereas in the daily coding problem, it's just, I believe, left to right and top to down. Uh, but that really does not matter. Um, again, you can sort of pause this video and check out the link given in the description below and try solving this problem on your own. Uh, the problem is, is pretty straightforward, to be honest with you, and there's not that many complications um, and not that many gotchas but you still have to be aware of the boundary conditions. And as you can see here, like I've mentioned in most of my videos, whenever you have a 2D matrix problem and it's like, hey, find this part, whether this thing exists or not, that thing is pretty standard and it's usually more like a DFS problem. And over here, just by looking at it, you can see that it is a DFS problem. For those of you who are new to this video and don't really understand what DFS is, I would urge you to like, sort of look at all the other videos, but if you don't want to look at them, that's fine. I'll try to explain it as I go forward as well. Cool. So as you know, the best thing that you want to do when you start with the problem is that you want to start with the base condition. And our base condition over here is that, hey, if board has not been given to us, then we just return, let's just return false. Because if there's no board, then obviously the word cannot be formed and then move forward from there. Cool. So. Um, as I mentioned before, this is a DFS problem, but you know for a fact that there is no starting point. By that, what I mean is that they can, the starting point could be anything, right? So if you have, let's just take, um, let's just say we have to take S SFC as our target word. So you know you can't start from here, so your index is not going to be 0, 0, whereas your index is going to be 1, 0 instead where one is a row and zero is a column, right? So um, due to that reason, you, what you have to do is you have to iterate through all the elements inside the list and then move forward or basically call your utility function from there on forward. I hope that makes sense, but let's just do that really quick. So you can just see it. I'm just gonna iterate through all the rows and then iterate through all the columns and do note over here we, we do not know for a fact that this is a square matrix or not or uh, by that what i mean is that the number of rows is not equal to the number of columns um that assumption does not need to be made so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be calling length of board of zero and that's pretty straightforward and i'm just going to put pass over here uh what we need to do instead of writing pass is that we need to call a utility function so let's just quickly write the signature of the utility function and I'm just writing all of these as inner functions so I don't have to call self over and over again. Preference, um, you guys can do whichever you like. Um, but let's just talk about the utility function for a minute. So you know for a fact that you need to understand and analyze which index you're presently at. 
and then we need to move forward from there. So obviously I and J need to be passed as a parameter. Also, we need to pass in the dictionary, a dictionary which can sort of contain whether that particular value has already been seen or not. The reason why we're doing that is just because we don't want to go into a loop and then keep on looking at the same element over and over again. That really does not make any sense. So we're going to be calling visited as a dictionary, which is going to basically contain i and j, and then we're going to be moving forward from there. Um, so you have the ith element, you have the jth element, you have the visited, and we also need the targeted word. So the targeted word is something that is going to help us understand whether it, the values have been passed or not. So there are two ways of doing this. You can actually pass in one more argument and call it as position. Um, the position could basically be, hey, if the position is equal to length of the word, that means you've iterated through all the elements, you've found all the characters inside that word in a particular fashion. So that means that word exists. I rather prefer not using that. Um, I, I'm just going to use word. And I'm just going to say, hey, if word does not exist or the length of word is equal to zero, we return true. And obviously what we're going to be doing this since I've written it like this, you probably gain an intuition that I'm going to be splicing out the element that I've already gone through. And that, that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, yeah, and let's just write a pass here because now what we need to do is something more important. We need to check basically all boundary conditions. Now, if you're familiar with DFS, you probably know that this is something that you obviously have to do. If you don't, um, the reason why you do, why you make a new function or why you want to do boundary, con check your boundary conditions is pretty straightforward. It's just because um, if you're going left, if you're going right, there might be cases when you're going left, you're actually going below zero. And obviously there is nothing below zero um, inside a matrix. Obviously Python will sort of look at it and do something else because it sort of considers minus one as the last value, but that's not something that we want. And that's not something which is sort of accessible either. If they had said that you can, if you, if you want to find out SAA and they're saying that, hey, you can actually do a round robin sort of a thing, then probably we could have done that. But right now we can't. Um, cool. So let's just call a utility function inside our um, for loops. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say, hey, if this thing returns a true, then basically break out of the loop and return a true. Otherwise, you just return a false. So it's pretty straightforward. And now we need to just check our boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions are basically like sort of creating um, a is safe function. Um, that's just how I like it. It makes it more modular. Um, and we're just going to be checking whether i comma j is valid or not. So it's pretty simple. You just say, hey, if i is less than zero, or if i is greater than or equal to the length of word, or if j is less than zero, or j is greater than or equal to the length of word. Um, missed the space over there. Sorry. Um, basically, what you're saying is, hey, i and j have to be in the range, right? Um, and if they're not in that particular range, you basically return false. If they are, you return true, which basically means that's safe. Um, is this, this is just going to exceed out, but let's just write this over here. And the last thing that we need to check is whether i, j exists inside visited or not, which basically means that, hey, this thing has already been um, traversed. We cannot look at this element anymore. So pretty straightforward. And now what we need to do is we just need to call our boundary condition and we just say, hey, if is safe is going to be equal to false, then we return a false. And that's pretty straightforward. And the other condition is just that we want to check whether the word character or rather the character exists, right? So Basically, since you are at i comma j, you want to check whether i comma j has the first character inside your word. So we'll just do that. That's pretty straightforward. That's the main thing, actually. Just say, hey, if this thing is not equal to the first character inside your word, then you return a false. Otherwise, we can sort of move forward with our iterations or recursions, rather. Pretty straightforward. 
Um, now all we have to do is we just have to update visited because this if this particular thing is equal to the first word, then what we need to do is we need to update our visited as well. So we just say hey visited i comma j is equal to true. You can give it whatever value. We just have to give something which can sort of work in this favor. Uh, and the reason why we actually and okay, so if you don't know whether this thing is possible or not, it is. The reason why that this thing works is because when you pass in a tuple, it is able to go through the hash function which a dictionary has defined and you can actually go forward from there. But since visited is being passed as a reference, that sort of gives you more problems as well because since you're passing by reference, you want to make sure that you're sort of removing the value as well if it does if it if it's not there, right? So um, we'll sort of take care of that a little later, but do note that you need to backtrack it to the correct value as well. Cool. So now all we have to do is we just have to call our utility function and we need to use the ith and jth values will be going top, down, left, right. So for going up, we'll just do i minus space, i minus one, <clears throat> and then pass in j as it is and pass in visited. But do note over here, I'm going to be splicing out word. Um, and I'll be removing the first value. The reason why I'm removing the first value is just because we've already traversed through it, we don't need it anymore. And this will keep on recursively going, I mean, it'll keep on getting recursively called and eventually when the length of word is equal to zero, that's when you basically know that you've passed through all the characters. Um, similar to this, so let me just quickly copy paste this thing four times since we need to go top, bottom, left and right. So. We've already done top for bottom. What we need to do is we can just increment the value of i to plus one. Um, to go left, we just decrement the value of j. And for going right, we just increment of the value of j by one. And if either one of these returns a true, then we return a true as well. If none of them return a true, that means it's false. Basically, it travels through all the values, but still not able to find anything. That means it's false, so we would just say return false. But do note that when you're returning false, you also need to make sure that this particular value i comma j needs to be removed because um, you are basically tracking the value of visited and visited is being called by reference. So there's going to be only one thing as visited and you need to make sure that you're not you know, updating that or sort of incorrectly updating that as well. So that's Basically, it, I don't think that there's anything more to it. Uh, um, you can pause this video and check out the code one more time. But I think this should be good to go. And yeah, let's just try running it. So hopefully this should work. <clears throat> right, cool. So we are getting through. Um, let's just test it on one more thing. Just copy paste this. Let us see where this thing works. And while this is compiling or whatever, um, let's just talk a little bit about the time complexity. So you know for a fact that there are basically four particular combinations. So since you have four combinations, you wanna make sure that um, you understand the complexity well. So each iteration or each traversal, so if you are over here, you have F, you can go to B, to S, to C, or to D. And you can basically you know, see the thing just elongating after that. And whatever, whenever that happens, it's happening on four iterations at the same time. So basically you have four raised to power s, where s is the number of times you can, you'll probably be going outside of the thing. And also what you need to make sure of is that you understand that there is, there are actually two for loops which are being called for all the elements which are there inside your 2D matrix. So that's m into n. So basically your time complexity is m into n into four raised to power s or something like that. Um, and yeah, and that's basically it. So cool, so you can see that the code has compiled. Let's just try submitting it. Hopefully it should get submitted. And awesome, you can see that it's running fine. You can see that um, the memory usage is like really less. It is not the fastest solution. And the reason for that is because it's just doing recursive calls but there are a lot more faster solutions to this but you don't really need to worry about that too much um anyway so that's it for today's video um i, I would like to mention like 
in the series uh, i'll try to post in as many videos as i can but due to some time restrictions and due to some hardware issues and so on and so forth it's going to take me a while but i would like to post a video every single week um and if you did like this video do give a like and do comment i try to like respond to all the comments and i have to most of them if i haven't yet i'm going to soon um but do give a like and do subscribe to the channel we are a discussion over here and we'd love to have you on board with us anyways um have a nice day and thank you so much